Uh, we are now joined for the rest of the hour, maybe a little bit into the next. Uh, it'll be internet only then here on this Thursday edition, but the next 50 minutes live on the radio uh, to all the AM and FM affiliates, Global Shortwave, Satellite, XM, George Humphrey, a good friend of mine now going back more than 16, in fact, 17, 18 years. I, I think I met him when, uh, with Pat Buchanan's campaign before I even got on Access TV 16 years ago and then radio. But George Humphrey served two terms as a member of the Austin City Council, place four. Uh, he helped uh, um, co-found uh, the Austin Citizens uh, for Economical Energy. Uh, he, of course, uh, has uh, written books, uh, made uh, films, uh, and, and is just a great guy fighting the New World Order, you know, outside the normal political box. He is uh, just a guy who I absolutely love, and uh, so much is happening, so much is going on, George. I got a lot of questions I want to cover with you. You know the wars, the police state, but something when you when you drop by the office the other day because a lot of time you're outside the country. You're also a successful businessman. You know, I mean, you're a true globetrotter. What was you? You brought up the psychological warfare of the the rap stars, the Lady Gaga, the movies, uh, where vampires and killers and serial killers aren't bad guys. Uh, it's sexy. They have shows where serial killers are the hero. I mean, they are trying to psychically wound us, aren't they? So, and so that was the big topic you wanted to talk about is why they're doing that. You know, trying to I guess really introduce this this negative vibe, this negative energy, this this defeatist uh, system. So we accept and, and all the TV shows about the end of man, the world after humans, how wonderful it'll be, how ugly we are. They want us to think. That, that we're weak and bad because they know the opposite because we're coming to this critical juncture. Talk about that for the rest of this segment. Then I want to get into a whole bunch of issues and take phone calls. Absolutely, Alex. But first of all, I want to say thank you very much so, because so many of the issues that you talk about are so basic and fundamental and they're pretty dadgum scary from one point of view. And I remember when I first started getting into this stuff about 20 years ago, I was getting ready, I was thinking I was gonna run for US Congress and I knew that if I ran for Congress or if I have even opened my mouth about this, my future in politics was gone. And so it was kind of scary, but I'll tell you what, the choice that I made, the choice that you've made, the choice that most of you have made to tell the truth, to speak about the beauty of our country, to speak about the republic, to speak about freedom. You know what, not only is it the right thing to do, but it's the fun thing to do. And coming down to Alex's place, this place is alive. And even though Alex is, for most of you who don't know him, he's intense and he raises his voice. He's one of the coolest guys I know. He's so full of love and it's really fun down here. It's fun to work for the right things. And so what I'm really focusing on these days, and I've gone the whole gambit, I'm an economist, I've written books about the Federal Reserve, Glass-Steagall I was writing about 13 years ago, you know, and all this stuff has come true, all the things that Alex and I have been talking about for years and years, blah de da 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 What we are facing as, as a nation, as a community, as as individuals, as a family, it's so much bigger than what I even was aware of even four or five years ago. Clearly, the fight on the economic, political, cultural levels that are going on are so essential. And I'll tell you what, for all of the people listening, Alex Jones is doing more for your freedom and for the health of this world than almost anybody I know. He is the rear guard action. He's the guy who's keeping the wolves off of our tails and giving us the time so that we can create, so that we can become free, so that we can create communities, so that we can disconnect from the matrix. And talking about and understanding the real economic issues, the absolute fraud of the Federal Reserve, uh, the, the, the complete matrix level of the economics of this world. I mean, it's just, it's just so mind-blowing. It's so easy to prove. The fact that our political structure is it's a joke. Republican, Democrat, it doesn't make any difference. Bush, Obama, they are controlled by the same slave masters. Absolute fact. And, and probably 98% of you all already know that. Our cultural institutions... And that's where a lot of the power is, because the, as, as Alex has, it is an information war. There's a war on for your mind. 
and, and it's my belief that probably 90% of those of us who call ourselves patriots and who really are aware of fiat currency and of, of what's going on with the power elite and the Bilderberg, we're still enslaved by the system. And so what I've been working on is going deeper and deeper on the other way. And it's just like in the Star of David, you know, as above, so below. And while this show helps not thousands or hundreds of thousands, millions of people wake up to the where the rubber meets the road of the of the lies of our government, of the of the lies of our economy, of the lies of Wall Street, of the lies of our churches. Not all the churches, but many of the churches, is that there is something bigger, 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 bigger going on. What the game that we're playing is huge, and I have a very, very, very dear friend in India who always reminds me: life is a dream. Realize it. Life is a challenge. Meet it. Life is a game. Play it. And life is love. Accept it. And so, as I see it, as I see it. There's this huge tsunami of a wave of change coming at us at all different levels. And it's a quest, it's a challenge. Yes. Uh, this is a, a trial. This is Absolutely. all, a, a, I mean, and, and the system knows that. As Revelation says, the kings of the earth and the merchants trafficked in the souls of men. They want your mind, they want your soul. Absolutely, they want our soul. And, and it's amazing, I, I've watched that movie Matrix the first one 34 times. And it's so correct in one way. They want our energy. Why are they, you know, we as human beings, why are we destroying this world? Why are we destroying our families? Why are we creating such incredible bloodshed? Why are we using depleted uranium in Bosnia and Serbia and Afghanistan and you know, it's it's we're we're destroying. We're leaving traces of this mineral that will poison for thousands of years. We're human beings. It's four billion years, yeah. Yeah, and the half life of two thirty five is two hundred thirty seven thousand years. That's just the half life. And why are we using this uranium? And what I have become, I am becoming more and more aware of, and I'm becoming more aware every day is that what we're facing is... Fear not he who can kill yes. the body, but kill the soul. Exactly. They want that soul, folks. That's why you, they tell you you don't have one. They want it bad. Exactly. And, and as Alex has said over and over and over, is that this is a spiritual choice. This is a time of choice. And always remember, as scary as a lot of this stuff is, we can change it. We as human beings, when we get our act together, when we integrate our energies, when we get the right information, when we make our hearts and our minds and our bodies strong and join with others, then we are undefeatable. We can create such beautiful, wonderful qualities as human beings. All right, stay there. That's like nails on a chalkboard to the uh, New World Order vampires. We'll be right back with George Humphrey. I'm Alex Jones. And the admitted university studies and the admitted government funding, uh, they admit that they, for 50-something years, have been testing flicker rates, trying uh, to, to lower people's brain waves. Everything they do is to make you depressed, unhappy, uh, to feel inadequate. At one level, it's Madison Avenue to make you feel inadequate so, you, so they can sell you the cosmetic or sell you the, you know, the breast job or you know, whatever the case is. But there's no doubt that these people are into darkness. They are psychopathic. They have armies of sociopaths that serve them. Uh, and they're threatened by technological development. They're threatened by enlightenment, and they're trying to bring in a new dark age desperately. Uh, why is that from your research, George? Well, it's all about power. It's all about beings who are in control of our economic, political, cultural institutions, who are in separation consciousness, who don't want to give the power back. They're the big bullies. They're the, they're the people who don't share. They're the, they're the guy out in the playground who whips up on the younger kids. And I know that listening to Alex when he was young, he stood up to the bully. And, it, you know, he might have gotten smacked in the face, but he stood up. I did the same thing, and I bet many of you have done the same thing. People, it is time for us to get off of our knees as a culture. 
They have had us, they, when I say they, the power elite, the, uh, you know, the plutocracy, the Bilderberg, whatever you want to call these rascals, is that they have controlled the economic institutions for so long. And clearly anyone who knows anything realizes it's a total sham. But where they really get us is subconsciously. They get us through the chemtrails. They get us through the tamarisol. They get us through the fluoride. They get us through the lousy educational system. Bisphenol A is turning men into women. Absolutely. I, you know, we can go on and on and on and on and on about this. And this is really important. This is the first step is to become aware of what's going on. Because as I see it, the, the game I'm playing, I am no longer a martyr. I'm here to win this thing. And what does winning mean? It means that I have joy, I have health, and I have love, and that I, as a human being, have those qualities, and that I share that, and that our culture, our country, our world starts taking better care of itself. We start telling the truth that there is more peace, there is more cooperation, is that the level of violence goes down. Our quality of government goes back to a republic style of government. We become sustainable in the real way, not the way these politically correct people are talking about. They always create counterfeits. They always create these false things. But I'm talking about living within our means, but really focusing on what is important. And what is important is not more, and I make money, I love money, I chase money, but what's really important is not more money, it's not more goods, it's not more materialism, it's how much love we have in our hearts. Well, it's in the hierarchy of needs, where is money? If money is to secure your family, be strong, yes. be able to protect yourself, yes. then that's one thing. But if you if you put it at the top of your hierarchy of needs, Absolutely. it should be way down at the bottom, but it's like, it's like fuel. I don't worship gasoline I'm putting in my car, absolutely. but I gotta have it. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? We are human beings. And we can do better. And we're starting to do better. And just like 20 years ago, when you and I first started talking about this stuff, people used to go crazy with me. Crazy. You were telling me your daughter out in Southern California, it's on fire out there. I'll tell you what. We're, all over the world now, all over the world, people are coming up to me. I spend about four months a year in Asia. And I'm walking down the streets in some little Asian town. And I say, hey, didn't I see you on an Alex Jones film? Hey, didn't I see you do that film called 9-11, The Great Illusion? Hey, I read your book. Oh, I've heard you on Alex Jones. My daughter's in Santa Cruz. All of her friends are aware of Alex and what he's doing. People stop me everywhere. And you know what? I love it. And that's not us bragging. We're a sonar ping for folks that aren't known. Yes. You don't know because nobody knows who you are. We are public figures, and it's getting more and more as a gauge. We see the awakening. That's why we're so positive, and that's why the system's going so nuts, because they know that the awakening, that's why I'm getting chills like all the time now. Used to, I barely yes. got them. I'm having chills constantly. I used to be, I used to wake up in the middle of the night sweating cold bullets. I was scared, you know. And you know what? I still have some trembles every, you know, when I see what's going on, it still gets me really angry. But now, I, I, but now I, I, I'm excited. No, I'm saying I'm having chills of good now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like the other day I was in Randall's and all these, you know, these people, I, I have no idea. But not only here in Austin, Texas. All over the world. Or in Santa Cruz. And we have a connection to all these people. We're brothers and sisters together for liberty. The world is, is, is coming together. Uh, uh, yeah. that, that now it's easier for people to talk about these real issues. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's really threatening the establishment. So they're now coming out and saying, if you don't like the government grabbing your genitals at the TSA, you're a conspiracy theorist. So, so now even known facts, if you don't like them, you're a conspiracy theorist, which now means heretic. Well, you know what? We got to stop playing their game. These little minions, these slaves, these... <laughs> these... I don't even know what the right word is. Renfields. <laughs> they make me funny. They're the kids that you didn't want to play with. They're the kids who are, the, who are not very nice. They're the people you don't want to have over for dinner. And you know what? If they want to call us conspiracy theorists, too bad. You know what? That's, it's like, it's, it's just so silly. And you know what? Alex has been putting his money where his mouth is. He's doing these incredible things. And if you don't make some, you know. And what do you Alex, think of the studios? 
Alex, your studios are unbelievable. Well, I haven't even done the real tour yet. France. I've known this guy since he was a teenager, since he was schlepping stuff around the back of his car and, and doing it with passion, even then passion. And through the law of conscious manifestation and the law of attraction, bringing good people together, he has created the, com the center of truth information around the world. And, you know, I talk to a lot of people, they say, well, they don't like Alex because he yells. And I say, look, the things he's getting through, he's just get through that information, listen to him, because what he's saying is so right on. And he's gone from zero zero to having this incredible well george i mean i mean i'm only one little thing in a larger no, hole but, no, but baloney well i mean out of a lot of uh, but out a lot of boulders by the side of the ocean i'm a big boulder but there's millions of them but you know what? my We're issue though is boulders well, well i mean yeah. i never exactly yeah but i mean i never calculated this success I never calculated the anger, the you know, the yelling, the breaking through. But people are in a trance. So people who are already yep. awake sometimes it's grating, yep. but it it's like cold water on somebody who's passed out. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. Because it takes a lot of knocking at the door of a lot of people who've really shut down. And you know what? Once you get through, and once you start hearing it, and once it starts clicking, you start realize, oh my God, O M G. And I'll tell you what, Alex not only is telling the truth, but he's also being sponsored by some incredibly good people and helping them. For example, one of his products, Interfood, it's a fabulous product. You know the folks that developed it. Yeah, right? Steve St. Clair, fine guy, very conscious, been on the same side, doing the same things that we're doing. And to win this war, we, you, Everybody, we have to. Yeah, you're always telling me I need to get healthier, and I have. have. I actually listen to you. I've been stay trying. Healthy. No, no. Just take a little bit of it every day, and you get healthier. But uh, enough about me, though. I mean, I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you're too nice. But, 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 like overall, what is your? What do you think of Obama? I mean, you were in the Obama deception when, uh, when, when, when he was uh, president elect. Uh, he was being called the Messiah, God, and you stepped out and, 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 and went on the record in that film, and now it's all come true, unfortunately. Well, it's not very hard to figure this stuff out. This guy shows up. We don't know where he's from. He says he's from Hawaii. Even back then, people were saying, where was he born? Where did he go to school? Where are his records? Why? How did he sh uh, speak at the 2004 Democratic Convention? Nobody knew him. I mean, it's so easy to figure out, folks. Is he a great speaker? He's an incredible speaker. Would he be interesting to have dinner with? Yeah, probably. But the guy is a fraud. He's a puppet. He's just the same. But the point is, when you came out against him early on, back then, I mean, that was going on on a limb with friends and family because they said, after George Bush, we're ready for our Messiah. Yeah, and, 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 and they created, of course, it's the, it's the back and forth. It's the, it's the straw dog. It's the Trojan horse. Folks, anything that the predominant media brings you is a Trojan horse. George Bush, Bill Clinton, the Bushes, Obama, friends. But I think, I believe that probably 85% of you are aware of that and past that. We know that these folks are puppets. They, we know that they want to be our slaves. But you were talking about the Great Awakening. The system's going to throw everything they can at us. What the do you... system's broken. You saw the movie The Inception, right? That one Leonardo DiCaprio where all the buildings would just fall down by themselves through their thoughts. Friends. You know that the economic system of this world is deteriorating. It's built on sand. There's nothing there. This $1.39 trillion in the QE1 and 2 programs, it's all digital magic. It's not there. It's false. There is no money. And they'll SWAT team your house and yes. kill you if you don't give up your house when you're bankrupt. Sometimes the banks even take it when they, when they don't yes. even own it. But then the banksters are allowed to create thousands of trillions, and, and then we're supposed to bow down and, and... And it is happening all over the world, in Greece, in Ireland, in Portugal, in Zimbabwe, all over the world. And it's, but it's happening here. The debt per person in the United States of America is about three times, not including the derivatives, of what it is in Greece. And friends... It's just a matter of time. So protect yourself. Invest some of your money, this is my own point of view, in hard bullion, gold and silver. 
gold and silver and get yourself real well it's thin. only gone up 400 percent since uh <laughs> 2000 you know do you remember back in the 90s when we were talking about this stuff and people were just going la 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 and you know what if you'd invest it ten thousand or a thousand dollars back in 2000 it'd be worth who knows right now, and especially if you put it in any futures. Well, if you'd have put a thousand in silver, it yep. would be worth uh, seven thousand. I think close to eight. It depends on where in your whatever spot. seven eight thousand. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, if you bought it at five dollars an ounce, yes. what would it be? Five dollars an ounce. It would be. It is. It's thirty three dollars an ounce. Five six. Uh, seven times, yeah, right yeah. now, yeah, and then and then gold. Uh, Gold's it, about five, four times, four and a half times. But gold and that's a bad investment. Have been you <laughs> conspiracy gold, theorists? Conspiracy theorists. I'm one of those patriots. But anyway, just FYI, my opinion is is that as the dollar and as the euro and as the other fiat currencies lose value, which they will as more and more people wake up because of the massive debt, because there really is nothing there, it's out of thin air, is that the hard assets, a monetary assets, will go up in value. Well, you wrote the book, what is it, 97 or, 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 or 98 when they were debating getting rid of Glass-Steagall. I remember listening yeah, to yeah, it on yeah. book on tape. Yeah. Because uh, I've read them all. The first one was Common Sense, Common right? Common Sense, an introduction to the dangers of the new world. And order. then you said they're going to, they, ha they have these derivatives. They're talking about getting rid of Glass-Steagall. If they do that, it'll take a decade or so. Everything will totally implode. They'll set up their <laughs> world bank. And now we're here. You know what? And... That wasn't so hard to figure out then. I mean, you know, it's just basic fundamentals. All you do is follow the money and where it goes. And the Glass-Steagall, you know, I'd love it if they brought Glass-Steagall back. My opinion is it's too late to fix the sinking ship. But it's not a bad thing. As one ship goes down, we, the people of this nation, the clear-thinking people of this nation, who believe in truth, who believe in love, who believe in cooperation, is that we are going to build the new society. And I'm not being wild. Or no, no, we've got to be here to explain to people what yes. happens to the globalist. This is the way uh, I think Stuart Rhodes likened it when I was, you know, talking to him. Uh, I don't think it was on air, but 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 he said, uh, "This is the USS Titanic." And it's sinking, and the uh, UN ship, you know, the New World Order ship pulled up and said, we will save you. But really, it's cannibals on board that yeah, want to eat you. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I added that part. And then, <laughs> and then we're the USS Liberty, the USS Constitution, the USS Humanity, freedom, free will, goodness, decency, you know, light. We're pulling up saying, don't get on that ship, get on this ship. Yes. And you know look what? at those vampires over there, the gangway, telling you to get on board with them. They're the ones that blew the hole in the ship. And as, as we've said before, friends, get off your knees. Detach from the existing matrix. Detach as much Just say, as like, like Babylon, mentally, spiritually, I come out of you, you're a fraud, I don't believe any of it. And you know what? A lot of you who don't know, Alex, a lot of you don't realize that this guy right here he's got a solid connection with spirituality he realizes that the soul is eternal and that telling the truth and love are the essential eternal elements and yet and he is the reason he can come here and do this day after day and show this bravery the reason he can go down to the capitol like he did last week and speak to our to our slave masters is because he's not afraid, and neither should you, because you know what? The game's over. The game of the imperialists, the game of these people, it still appears like they're in charge, but they can't continue. It's it's gone. It's over and done. They're making all these shows of force and sticking their hands down our pants in a wild attempt to yes. get control back. Yeah, and, and, and it's not going to work. And Alex has been giving us the time. And most of you who are out there, you're giving us the time. No, yeah, they're giving us the and time. Each one of you out there can just speak to one person this week. Just speak to one new person. They have no idea of the crossroads, or, or some do, that everything, every mind we free, every person we get to look at reality now is 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 incalculably valuable to, the, to, to, to humanity and the species. Do you remember that book I used to give out called The Hundredth Monkey that talked yes. about... You know, if four to five to six percent of the population. Those were studies to, in Japan. Yes, absolutely. It's a true story. And when a new concept comes through, people, first of all, ignore it. Then they laugh at it. Then they get violent with it. And then is enough a critical mass gets aware of it. Then it just happens. And you know what? For so long, 
less than 1% of the population has been aware of this stuff, but in the last couple of years, our numbers are increasing, 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 increasing. And if we're just about at the tipping point, and if just a f the people of this show, and this show goes out, I don't know, how many people listen to this show a week? Oh, uh, and count internet and everything, it's about 10 million a week. It's, it's amazing. And if just 50% of you can speak to one person and get one person the next two weeks to wake it up, Think of what that means, because this there is a war on for your minds. And the important thing to remember is don't speak about with this about fear. See it as a game. This life is a game. Let's play it. There's a there's a war between good and evil going on. Come in for the big win because you're already going to be in the war regardless. They're already going to run yeah. over you. You might as well stand up and come in for the big win. And it's like why not play the game? Let's say see this as a wave. Get your surfboard out and let's surf this wave. Let's have some fun with it because we can make this society our own lives, our families. We can have so much more fun. We can be so much more healthy and we can have such big smiles on her face. And so, you know, at first, for a long time, I was really scared about this stuff. And we have to go through that. But you know what? It's not so scary. I mean, you know, I, I'm concerned for sure because there's going to be turbulence and there's going to be some tough times and some people probably are going to get hurt. But we're living in an incredible time. We're blessed to be living in this time of great tumult. We are blessed. This is, this is, this is the center of the universe, this planet of ours, this world of ours, what's going on right now. And, you know, one of the things I talk to Alex about is that I go to India and I read all this prophecy stuff. I read about going from the age of Pisces to Aquarius and from the Kali Yuga to the Satya Yuga. And I read all about the Mayan calendar. But there's real science behind this. There's this thing called the galactic shift and the processional shift that is real science. And things are changing. And you know what? This is not some new age or weird stuff. It's just fact. And so we might as well play with it. Anybody who can look at their eyes can see that the world has changed so much in the last 20 or 30 years. But the whole solar system's changing. The whole solar system. And friends, as I've, probably most of you know, every planet in our solar system, according to Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 and the National Institute of Science of Russia, has, has increased their heat. All the planets are getting hotter because we're getting into an area where we're getting more radiation. No, that's right. Well, they admit, because they're doing samples, not just from the sun yes. or the moon manipulating weather, because the, the moon is more of a, you know, a lensing effect right, right, when it right. blocks the sun or doesn't block, you know, it controls the tides. But what's happening is, is that more radiation just from space, more particles yes. is saturating the atmosphere. It's coming in. And there's no question about this. This is, this is, Back. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't and we must be fabulous stewards of this. And I am a true. Stay there. We got to go to break. We got to go okay. to break. We're going to come back, take two segments of calls, five minutes to the end of the show, and then we got five minutes of overdrive, George Humber. Real fast, you were talking about the whole bin Laden thing during the break. <laughs> well, it's so funny to me. Do any of you listening have any people that you know in your life who just don't tell the truth and who are perpetual liars? And at first, you know, they speak with a forked tongue and it confuses you. But then after a while and you get to know them, if, you, if they're still in your life, it becomes almost a joke. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's like right now. I mean, Osama bin Laden taken by the SWAT team and then they supposedly kill him and dump his body First of all, probably 90% of you know that he died in either 2002 or 2003 from kidney failure. Yeah, but on top of it, they have fake situation room photos and later admit they're fake. And yeah. then he didn't, he didn't have a firefight with it, them. It's like 9-11 like is that there's not one or two or a dozen. There are hundreds of factual pieces of information that show that the story is a fairy tale. And so to me, like it's like... <clears throat> But in this thing about Osama right now, what a joke. It's like saying Santa Claus is real. It's like, how can they how can they do this? But you know what? Every time they lie, you know what the price of a lie is? The price of a lie is the truth. And as the you know, the lie of 9-11 is the truth that actually boomerangs back on them. It's called karma. The lies that they tell us every day that you are, and others are exposing is the truth. And as horrible as these things are, they're coming back to it's the karma or what goes around, comes around, or whatever you want to call it. Reap what you sow. We are those of us who believe in the truth, who believe in God, who believe 
in, in, in honesty and integrity and who believe on, on respect for human life is that things are changing. And as dark as these days seem, things are getting better. And I don't like to talk about win or lose because the only reality is right now. But we're winning this thing. Yeah, they've decided to lose, so it's not even win or lose. They've yeah. decided to lose. Dave in California, you're on the air uh, with uh, George. He's putting his headphones on. Dave, thanks for holding. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Prison Planet uh, TV member Dave from uh, California. Now, two things. I just want to know how the bringing back of Glass-Steagall will help cancel out those derivatives. And this weekend on the television set on those riots in Athens, we saw what looked like a three-foot by six-foot sign, and it said... Uh, Goldman Sachs Employee of the Decade, and it looked like it had George Papandreou's picture in it, in English, right there in Athens. Now, they're waking up. I mean, getting rid of Glass-Steagall, I mean, bringing Glass-Steagall back, that wouldn't let them create these derivatives. Yeah, well, first of all, it's not going to happen, or at least I don't think it's going to happen. It would be a positive step, but I don't think it will happen. And then your question is a very, very good one. How would it would reverse these derivatives? And the snakes are already out of the bag. You know, we've had $1.3 trillion in the QE programs in the last 16 months. And as I was saying to a friend here the other day, is that probably 80% of that, what we call money or currency, has gone to money heaven because it's been paying off the interest of those toxic derivatives. Otherwise, we would have had much, 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 much more inflation in the system. So your question is a good one. And I don't have a good answer for it. All right. Thank you, Dave. Tim, and, and we're going out to break, but uh, Tim in Washington, go ahead. We'll take you out to break and hold the music down. Go ahead. Uh, hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Go ahead. all you guys and sell. Hey, I was, I was curious. You were mentioning movies like The Matrix and, and everything like that. And do you think there's some similarities uh, to the movie They Live and the quote-unquote signal that keeps everybody... And, 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 and the lie. archetype of Rowdy Piper having to beat his friend up to make him put the glasses on to see the truth? Exactly. Absolutely. I, I, Your view on They Live. i got to jump, Tim. Oh, Great man, question. That's an amazing, an amazing movie. And, and look at these movies because this guy called Spielberg, <laughs> he's, head of the bad, he's head of the bad guys as far as Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what do you think John Carpenter's doing, though, with They Live? I think. Oh, it's, it's horrid. All right, all right, all right. Stay there. We'll be right back. Just to be clear, you, you're saying you like They Live, but you were saying that uh, all these other films, I mean, clearly they're conditioning us, and uh, there's no doubt. Ronnie in Texas. Uh, Ronnie, you're on the air. During, Thank you, sir. During my most recent visit to the Capitol yesterday, I spoke personally with the Lieutenant Governor Delusional David Screwloose, and I was ang angrily filling out a tiny card when Lieutenant Governor walked right up to me to talk, and he pretended to be on our side, and he said a few great slogans, and he told me he'd ask about some doctors about what I'd told him about my experience with medicinal marijuana, but really I called Mr. George Humphrey to ask you for your help. With the City Council of Criminals and Sociopaths, they made a special rule to exclude me, Ronnie Reeperseed, and, and others. Yeah, that's right. They're now excluding regular speakers, and they're making it harder oh. to speak. God. You know, Ronnie, I, when I was a city councilman, right or wrong, I would get to the office about 6.45, 7 o'clock every morning, and we had what was called the bullpen. And it's my belief that an elected representative, one of their biggest things is to talk and to listen to their, their, the people of the community. And if somebody disagreed with the position that I had, I would always put them first in line and listening to the people. I am a former city council member. And actually, I'm a pretty nice guy and very polite, and I don't call names. Most of the council members will not return my phone calls or my <laughs> letters right now. I keep writing them. I keep sending no, them. No, no. When you go down there and look at them, they are they're incredibly... Scared. Well, they're scared. Yeah. They're scared because, you know, just like this water treatment plant number four, they're saying, we've got to have it to have more water. Whoa. Look, go out to Lake Travis. It's empty. Creating another water treatment plant is not going to make more water. There's a reason that there was less than 200,000 indigenous people in Texas before the first settlers came here because there wasn't enough water. We're out of water now. And built, you can build all the water treatment plants you want, but it doesn't make more water. It's just like fluoride in the water. Every objective study has shown that fluoride is a thyroid inhibitor, not good for your teeth, and is bad for your health. Case, case closed. So objective. And yet these 
people are not waking up to the reality. And well, the more than that, I had a whole water story I meant to get to, and I yeah. didn't get to it. Uh, but it turns out the Army Corps of Engineers waited and didn't release the water, let it build up to flood. And now they're trying to buy up people's land for nothing. <clears throat> and they're sending water through of Travis down to farmers that aren't even using it. So Absolutely. so, so, so there's not only shortages, they're also trying to accentuate that. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't realize that more people are homeless on the Mississippi River right now from the floods than all the homeless people that, uh, that were in New Orleans. Both were terrible situations. But the lack of support for the people on the Mississippi from Washington because they did not vote for no. Obama. And, you know, this is simple, hardcore politics. And well, that's like when we have fires in Texas, Obama won't even come or help openly because Texas doesn't like him. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, well, that's like Obama's supporters. They get health care waivers. I mean, this is real. I mean, they don't have to get the insurance. This is hardcore politics. And, friends, we have to be aware of it. And at the same time, if we want to win... We have to disengage. We have to understand this stuff and, and see it like a keto. Let this information go so we don't get sucked into it. But spend our time getting strong and healthy and joyful and creating a types of community and lifestyles. Yeah, we've got to be optimistic. Yeah. And we've all got to not let ourselves yes. get sucked into the negativity. I mean, cover the hard issues. Be bold about it. But at the same time, realize that you know we need to keep our heads about us and that incredible things are happening. I apologize to Michael and Mark. We'll be back live tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., Lord willing. And then, of course, back Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. And I hope everybody has a great 4th of July coming up as well. But we'll be live tomorrow. Uh, George, I, I, it's always great when you orbit back through town. I mean, how many months a year are you in Austin now? About four months a year, and I love Austin. <laughs> Austin is one of the real vortexes of energy in the in the world. It's a great place, and there's a lot of great places, and I love traveling around, meeting new people. All right, buddy. Well, it's always good seeing you here. There is a lot of great energy. Plus, the good, the bad, and the ugly are all moving here. Oh, man, Austin's a great place, and thanks for having me on. Go, Alex. Ah, oh, go, George, man. You're awesome.